Yeah, distro... Like, no matter what distro you use, if you're using something that is not... Well, this is the big thing about Atomic. Like, I, I guess for anyone who doesn't know, just what does it mean for something to be Atomic? Because I, I, I would imagine some of you haven't just heard that term before. It's either you do the stuff or you don't. So <laughs> when you when we have uh, something that it's not in one go, for example, updating a system, which I don't know, <laughs> can take even five or six hundred steps. It depends on how many packages you have. And each package is, is a step, if you think about it. <laughs> um, there are ways many at least 600 ways things can go wrong mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, you will be left with a system that is in in a let's say hybrid state it's not done but it's not as it was before mm -hmm. let's say you need to uh, update 600 packages and it breaks at the package number 300 mm -hmm. the previous 300 packages were updated the next one not but maybe something in the previous 300 packages depend on the new on the after 300 packages so you are in a broken state mm, i think it i don't know how much uh these is common but back in the day it was i remember in the times of i don't know it was fedora mm -hmm. 20 or something mm -hmm. like that i broke python uh, in an update and DNF broke because DNF was in Python. So it was pretty much unrecoverable mm -hmm. because uh, Python updated before DNF mm -hmm. in the pipeline, you know, on the list of packages. Mm -hmm. So having this all or known deal is very important for the stability of the system. Mm -hmm. And you can achieve this in various ways. One is the image based way. Uh, like Vanilla and Ublu does, where you just download a big image and just unpack it somewhere. In case of OS3, you have your deployments. In case of Vanilla, you literally have another partition where you uh, deploy that image fully or not. Mm. If something goes wrong, you just abort the uh, procedure and you don't touch the original files. Or there are um, approaches like uh, Eon uh, and MicroS where you actually create a new BTRF, BTRF as snapshots of the running system and then perform the transaction inside that snapshot. Mm -hmm. So you don't touch your running system. And then at the end, if something goes wrong, you just delete the snapshot. Nothing happened. Mm -hmm. So this, if the snapshot is there, it means that everything go, went well. So you have the atomicity done in this way, where everything goes well and you have no snapshot or you don't have a snapshot. So mm -hmm. that's where the atomicity comes from and they have the advantages. But to have true atomicity, you also need immutability because you, cannot, you, you don't have to change the running system in mm -hmm. ways that are not atomic. And... That's where the confusion comes from when we speak about immutable system and mm -hmm. atomic system and stuff like that. You touched on this before, but I think it's, it's important to hammer home. We are seeing a lot of these sort of cloud-based concepts coming to the desktop, and Atomicity is kind of one of them as well, because that's very much a, a, like a, a very common database concept. Like, you want your database calls to run in an atomic way where you're not updating a, you don't want to update a user record and not update the entire record. You want that entire thing to take place in a single action. We're seeing containers come to the desktop, and I know like people have their opinion of like I I, I think a, a fair thing to have an opinion on is like the serverless space where people are getting these wild like I don't know if you saw this recently. There was um someone who they were running one of the I hate the term serverless. It's really stupid. But they were running the free tier of um, whatever platform they're on, Netlify, Netlify, and mm -hmm. they had their website on there, and it had, like, a MP4 file, and people started, like, smashing that file, and they were hit with a $104,000 bill because they didn't actually have a cap on how much data could Whoa. be used. 
Uh, luckily, after it got a bunch of attention, they ended up dropping the bill. But um, besides that part of the web, that's that's a, a part that's certainly an issue. <laughs> but all of this really cool tech on the web, I think, does have a place on the desktop. But because we've done things in the way that we've always done them, I I get why there's like some pushback on the way it's being done because. It is different, and you know, change is is weird. Change is scary, and Positive. yeah, I, I don't ever see a point where like immutable distros become the only thing available. But it, this is Linux. People are going to do things that they want to yeah. do, but I could see a place where the more mainstream offerings they are these. They at least have the option of having an atomic system. Ubuntu has that. Um, they're, they're doing their thing. Fedora obviously has their thing. And I, I could see other distros doing this as well. And it's as, as more distros do what we're going to start. I think of the major one, just uh, like the major baked one. Uh, only Ubuntu is still missing one. I, I think they are doing something later in the year, mm. uh, the Ubuntu core desktop. But. SUSE has one, mm-hmm. uh, OpenSUSE has one, Fedora has one, uh, many actually. <laughs> uh, there is Vanilla OS. I think there are also various Arch based things. V- yes. Um, 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 I think it's interesting with the Fedora yeah, case because I they think... actually do want to make the Atomic uh, version like kind of the main. The, the main, like, go-to version. Like, this is the version, like, you default to. Obviously, if you want to use Workstation, it's normal state. That's going to be there. But for, like, the average user, there is this sort of... Uh, there is this push towards getting that to a state where it actually is just the thing that people want to go to. I think it makes sense. I mean, thinking about it, uh, who are generally people using laptops or desktops or whatever. Mm. They are either the very basic, let's say, Chrome, Chromebook-like use, where you just browse, mail, videos, whatever. Do you really need to DNF stuff? No. You can do everything with flat packs. So there it goes. Uh, then there is the developer using you know, Linux for development and from that point of view, they should... I mean, if you are a developer and not using containers in 2024, I will do, uh, you know, some update course, probably, <laughs> because, I mean, it's the, the, the standard, industry standard in the last 15 years, probably. Mm-hmm. So the developer doesn't have that many problems in using an, an, an atomic desktop. And the problem arises only on people using um, either really, really low-level type of le- of development. I don't know, you you develop the kernel or systemd or, sure, I don't know, yeah. something really... Then, yeah, okay, you, you know better than anyone else how to keep your system, probably. And, um, or people that just want to have fun. Mm. And for those... The normal spin is uh, the best bet, I think. But for how many use Linux just for fun? And I think it's a minority, a vocal minority. Like, uh, obviously, it's fun. I I have fun using Linux, Mm -hmm. but I also need it to work, (laughs) you know? So that's why I think it's a sensible default to have the atomic version be the default. Mm. Uh, I don't know if we are still there, but we are going in that direction pretty fast, I think. Because if you think about how how old is the mainstreaming of this type of distros and think about like how slow is the adoption of stuff in, especially in the desktop world where change is bad, right? Uh, I think we are actually not going that slow at all. Mm. I, I, I've said it before, but I think what is speeding it up is having things like DistroBox and Flatpak that do, like, that do make it so you don't have to build your own image. Because the building your own image part to get applications installed, that's like a 
non that's non starter for a lot of people. Um, especially if you are that kind of person who is the I'm using the laptop to run Chrome. Like for those people, they want to just be able to easily install applications and not really think about the technical stuff. I I th I think with better tooling, better documentation, the people who do use Linux for fun will still have a place on those mutable systems. Like they will have like in. If you enjoy messing around, like, ricing your system, I can see you being the kind of person who enjoy making these weird Docker files to have your system build in a very specific way so you can deploy that on each of your devices and, and maybe have, like, a slightly different version for, each, for your laptop and a slightly different version for your desktop and all of this sort of stuff.